I quit. I quit. I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. I've put up with this, that, and the other, and I'm out of here. Is this you? Is this you today? Are you ready to get out of there and start a new life? Well, it may be the time for you to do that, but there are a few things for you to consider before you go off on that tirade. And we'll talk about it in this episode. Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Patton. Welcome to this episode of License to Live. My name is Dr. Jarrett Patton, and I am your host for our journey together today and every day you choose to listen to this show. If you or anyone you know has been dissed in their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast and subscribe to License to Live. You guys know we always talk about being dissed on this show and, and we're talking about being displaced. We're talking about being discouraged. We're talking about being disenfranchised. All of these feelings that you may have are something that we've all had and that's exactly why we made this show and today there's been so much in the news about the great resignation. People are quitting all over the place. And actually, yes, our healthcare system is feeling the strain. And we will make sure that we talk about the great resignation, what it means to the labor force, and what should you do if you need to say, I quit. And we'll get started right on that as soon as we're done thanking our sponsors. Hey, this is Dr. Jarrett Patton. Do you need more positivity in your life? No matter what part of your life you want to transform, positive affirmations can help you achieve your goals. But sometimes making permanent changes can be difficult. Designed with you in mind, License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will inspire and equip you to become the best version of yourself. License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will set you on the path to changing your mindset, beliefs, speech, and ultimately your actions. You can change your life now by getting your copy at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your finer book retails, or LicensedToLive.com. That's LicensedToLive.com. This is Super Bowl champion Mike Logan, and you are listening to License to Live. Well, if it isn't enough that we have had so many things going on in this pandemic, let's think about it. Let's think about how our worlds have changed, how our commute may have changed, maybe how we conduct day-to-day -day business. And some of these changes are around for the long haul. It is no wonder that we have issues with the healthcare system. And we knew before the pandemic, the healthcare system was almost broken. It wasn't running as efficiently as possible. 
and people would be disgruntled, but they'd put their nose down to the grindstone and keep churning out the patients. They keep churning out the work. They keep generating revenue and things would go by. But this pandemic has done something with the overall labor market. We can't seem to find enough workers for anywhere. You guys have shown up at your favorite restaurant that suddenly is closed at an odd hour or your neighborhood store or maybe even your big box store. They don't have enough workers to help you. Or if you do get into these places and there are workers and they are open, they may be very new and they may not be able to help you the way a longer term employee would go uh, between some of the things going on with the unemployment system, with some of the bonuses that may have been out there, uh, and with people looking at their wages and saying, you know what, my job simply isn't worth doing all of that. People are just quitting and they're finding other things to do. They're going on to an and find a new leash on life. And that's okay. I mean, heck, that's what I do. I help people find a new life by defining a new career and having it all come together. Or maybe you want to get on a higher level. But nonetheless, this is happening to a whole lot of people at once. And you may be one of them. You may be one of these people who have been hanging on. You've been a good soldier. You've been working very hard. And usually in the system, people say that if you're doing a good job, you may not get the applause, but hey, no news is good news and just keep on working, working, working. Even though you may be unhappy, even though you may be doing things that aren't really your specialty, or you may even be doing tasks that are that are below you or could be done more efficiently by someone else. And well, the most obvious one is charting. Let's face it. However, there could be a lot of things that are going on with you. And you say, well, you know what? Maybe it's your turn. Maybe it's your turn to quit. Maybe it's your turn to start something new. Do you feel like you're a part of this great resignation? (laughs) Do you want to turn in your resignation? Don't do it in that hail of bullets. We've talked about it on the show before. In fact, we've had a quitting master on here. And I'll make sure I put the link to the I quit episode uh, that we did a couple years ago in there because you can hear from a professional quitter how to properly quit a job. So you don't want to go in that blaze of bullets to be short. I mean, sometimes people want to go on that dramatic Twitter tirade. I mean, I've been seeing so much stuff on Twitter. You guys can find me on Twitter at Dr. Jarrett. Spell out the word Dr. J-A-2-R-E-1-T. But I've been seeing so much activity on Twitter with people either being fed up with their jobs or being maltreated in their jobs, maybe bullied, maybe being forced out. And all the excuses can somehow be related to COVID, I'm sure. But these are really some underlying issues that you're there. So if you are at that point and you are ready to quit, Don't just go on Twitter and start saying all these things about that. And I mean, the stories are entertaining and I'll read them. Sometimes I'll like them. Sometimes I'll just DM you and say, hey, you know what? You have you have my support. You have my solidarity. Keep fighting your fight. But uh, there's a way to go about it. And there's some things before that moment that you should consider even before you quit, because a lot of people quit prematurely. And when they quit prematurely, they end up getting themselves in an area where they can't exactly know where to go next. They they don't they kind of quit and say, well, I can get another job doing the same thing at another hospital. And what does that do? It ends up making a disaster out of your life because you go through all of this energy to transfer to a new job and Things are great the first three months. You feel refreshed. You feel renewed. And then things get back to same old, same old, because you really were just moving location without really analyzing the problem. So first, of course, analyze the problem, because a lot of people are doing the wrong job. They're on the wrong seat on the bus. And that's okay. You have to find your way to the right thing that gets you doing the right things. And the first thing 
on that quitting sequence is really ask for what you need. Again, we're in a system in where if you're doing a good job, the expectation is you'll be taken care of. But that's not always the case because people who may supervise you, people who may be in the C-suite, their goals and objectives are a little different. And so if things seem to be going relatively okay in your area, then there's not going to be a stink. And well, it's the job they feel that you've been hired to do. So you're just doing what you're being paid to do. However, there may be some things about your job that you don't like or you think you could change. And well, the first thing before you just go to writing that 30 day notice or that 60 day notice or whatever day notice is in your contract, ask for what you need. Sometimes that may be more pay. You haven't had a salary adjustment in a while. Sometimes that may be you need to work at a more regular location and you don't need to be running around. Maybe you don't need the evening hours or maybe you need more weekend hours or maybe you need something else with some small modification you can actually get. And someone will say, hey, you've given me a pretty good argument. You're a great worker. We'd hate to lose you. And if this can keep you here, we'll be willing to give you that. And so the pay may cost a little bit. Uh, maybe if you, you, you fall behind in your charts a lot, maybe asking for a scribe could be something. There are things that can help you find more enjoyment and more pleasure in your current job. And if you have identified your needs, ask for it. Simply ask for it. That's all you have to do is ask for it. The worst thing they can tell you is no. Okay, fine. You may have thought that. Then you can move on. But for a lot of people, you know, we think it may be the money. It really may just be the time. And you may even give a concession. You say, hey, cut my salary by this amount. Just let me have Thursday afternoons off. Or let me, you know, have, have some time to just catch up on charting on a Tuesday. Whatever that may be, come up with something creative and make that case. Now, when you ask for something, you do need to be in the proper position to ask for it. If you're already teetering on the edge, you've already been warned three times about stuff, this is not your bargaining time. You probably should be looking to move on. So after you ask for what you needed, let's look at moving on. Some other things to consider. Well, of course, the transition time. What does that mean? Well, are you going to be looking for a job before you quit and then get another job and then quit? Okay, that's fine. Things can kind of go. Maybe you can schedule yourself some time off uh, and things like that, and, and that would be okay. Maybe this would be that time that you say, hey, I'm going to take a month off, or six weeks off, or three months off, and really take care of me. Even if that's just doing simple things, you don't have to cruise the world. You don't have to be all around the place. Just simply take care of yourself because that's something that, well, you need to be doing anyway. And the best time to take time off is in between jobs because you don't have the headaches of the old one and you haven't started the headaches of the new one. So really think about the time timing of all of this because you really should take care of yourself. Just don't go from one hamster wheel to the next. Take the time for yourself. Now, other things to consider may be some of your benefits, because ultimately, you know, this is another thing that ties us to our job, our, our benefits. And well, the benefits that we get for in healthcare are typically pretty rich. You can usually see lots of people in your healthcare system and maybe even some others uh, that you may need to see. And it costs you however much every two weeks it comes out your paycheck. Well, when the job goes away, well, a lot of time those benefits go away. So the timing of when you quit can really be on. And in most places, if you quit at the beginning of the month, like after the first of the month, then you're covered on benefits the rest of that month. And so if you're starting that next month in a new job, you could take three weeks off and still have your benefits covered. Or if you wanted to take longer, you could look into some other options like COBRA insurance. And that tends to be very expensive, much more expensive than what you were used to. But in a pinch, and hey, you'd want to just take an extra month off. Why not? You deserve it. You've 
ultimately worked hard enough to this point. I don't care if you just got out of residency or you're about two steps away from retirement, literally two steps away, like you're retiring tomorrow. Those are the things you need to think about around the insurance game, because that is another thing that keeps us stuck in place because we're paralyzed. We're fearful of not having insurance. Now, I've went through a time, of course, you guys are familiar with my license to live story. Not having health care insurance was a severe issue of mine because I didn't have a job. Uh, I didn't have income coming in. I couldn't afford the COBRA insurance. So I had to look for other ways to get health care insurance for myself and my family. And because my transition was very sudden, I didn't have time to plan for it, which is why I'm encouraging all of you guys to plan for this. So when you're looking at that next step, you're saying, okay, if, I, if I'm going right back into something very similar to what I went to, which many of you may, which is absolutely fine, just look at the things that you liked in your job, the things that you didn't like, and rank things by their importance level. If things are really important, then you're going to have them higher up on a list. People may have their pay as the most important thing. Well, okay, the money comes and goes. That probably shouldn't be your most important thing, but your time is more valuable than money in many cases. So maybe you want to look at time off. I know in the past I've taken jobs uh, where I may not have made a big salary leap, but hey, I've gotten a couple extra weeks uh, of vacation built into my schedule and increase. So I actually negotiated some things like that. You can negotiate the types of tasks that you will and will, won't be doing at the beginning of this and saying, you know what, I really hated doing such and such. Let's find a way for me not to do this in my new job, then I'll be happy. And these are the types of things that you can should negotiate, but you have to analyze first. That's why you don't do things abruptly. That's why you don't just jump from one place to the next. Um, some of you guys who are listening right now, fire starters, I know it's tough on you because some of you are being thrown out. I mean, jobs are being cut. People are, 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 are being sick and maybe not able to come back from an injury or an illness. So there are lots of things that may make this transition sudden. Hey, and then that's why you have license to live daily affirmations to keep your spirits up. That's why you have license to live a perimeter rebuilding your life after your career is shattered because we talk about strategies of confidence, uh, credibility, so on and so forth, building yourself up almost from scratch. So consider that. And then while you're doing all of this, let's look at your future. Where does your future lie? What do you see? Do you see yourself, you know, doing something amazing like uh, going off to space and taking a space flight? Okay, well, let's see how we can get there. Um, do you see yourself doing something like having your own TV show or being a Surgeon General or simply being a community doc? All of these are great aspirations, but you have to look at your long term goals and then find out how to get there. And if you don't know, that's when you ask for help. And there's lots of people to help depending on what you need and what your ultimate goals are. But you have to spend some time soul searching. So this isn't a flip the switch on, flip the switch off. Hey, I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to start a new life. I'm going to go from city A and doing this job to city B and doing this job. And that's going to change everything. No, the location will not change anything. No. The location will not change anything. You have to look at all these other things, all of these other things that are getting you the dissatisfaction in your life right now. You want to erase that and excise that. But looking at your future, your future is what you need to do as you are going forward in your job search. And if you say, hey, you know what? I always wanted to make cookies and open a cookie shop. Become an entrepreneur. Do that. Who's to say you can't? You are uniquely equipped with a number of skill sets inherent, a number of skill sets that have been learned, 
a number of skill sets that you're constantly developing, you can do almost anything. So the sky truly is the limit. And if you're going into space, then you're getting above the sky, (laughs) beyond the sky. So if you're part of the great resignation, Firestarters, I want you to know that that's okay. It may be something that is inevitable in your town or your community or in your life. And if that's the case, roll with it. Enjoy it. Plan it to the best of your ability and then go forward. You may need help along the way, and if you don't know where to go, you can reach out to me, a free strategy session at Time with Dr. Jarrett, spell out all words, timewithdrjarrett.com, and we'll develop a strategy. I'll listen to your unique situation, we'll develop a strategy, so at least you know what to do as your next step. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. You know I'm on LinkedIn, at Dr. Jared, across all social media. Spell out the word Dr. J-A-2-R-E-1-T. And I'm there too. So just reach out. Remember, Firestarters, if you or anyone you know has been dissed, disengaged, dissatisfied, disgruntled, disenfranchised with their current position, please invite them to join us along this journey. Simply go to your favorite podcast player and subscribe to Licensed to Live. It's important that you subscribe so you get every episode as they come out because I'm going to have a series of episodes coming out that are going to be coming very quickly at a rapid pace, and I don't want you to get left behind. So let me know what you want to talk about in these episodes. Connect with me on social media, connect with me on LinkedIn, and you know I will see you next time. No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.